Hello and welcome to Magi David's Lab. In this episode, I'll be taking you on a guided tour of the code used to get this display to light up like this. It's all about the code. I built this display on the breadboard to aid in the redesign of this other project which is based on the PIC 16C55. You can watch a video on that redesign project by clicking here. I created this code to replace a previous program in a display I built many years ago. I wanted the display to have a more analog feel and be more interesting than just turning the LEDs on and off. I think I accomplished this goal and created a base program that can be used to create more interesting LED displays with. Okay, let's get some of the basic concepts down. This program implements PWM, that's pulse width modulation. And PWM allows the PIC to control how bright any one LED is at at any given point in time. To do this, however, the display has to be constantly refreshed to control when a LED is on and when it's off. And this requires a very fast clock rate. This project uses a RC, that's resistor capacitor, clock source, and is estimated to be running at around 6 to 7 megahertz. And for this application, this clock rate is more than sufficient. I'm using a PIC 16F57 here because the original project uses a PIC 16C55. However, as the code stands, it will require only slight modification to operate on more powerful PIC microcontrollers. Okay, these two defines display LED on and display LED ref control how the display behaves. These values are at the top of the file to make accessing and changing them easier. LED on sets the value that will be a LED's max on value. LED rep sets the refresh cycle. This controls how much time will pass before the display will be changed. The rest of these defines are setting up references to which port and bit are assigned to each LED on the two bar graph displays. Next comes the reset vector and a command to execute when reset is triggered. The org statement here just tells the compiler that the code starts at address 0 in program memory. The first thing the program does is configure the micro to operate properly. This consists of running the commands in the subroutine display config. This subroutine just configures the ports as output and makes sure all the display memory registers are clear. Now we are getting into the meat of the program. The program starts off by loading the W register with the value defined by display LED on, which is the hex value FF. Now we copy that value into the register display memory 1. This completely turns on the first LED in the display sequence. Next, the program calls LED display, a subroutine that handles all aspects of updating the display. Next, the program configures how many times the program will decrement the LED's brightness setting during the refresh cycle. This is accomplished by loading W with the value display LED ref and then copying that value into the display count h register. I know, I know, this is all probably confusing at this point, but it will become clearer as we move on. Next comes loading the display count l register with the hex value ff. Now the program calls display decay. This subroutine takes care of managing the value in each display memory register. It basically decrements the value contained in each memory register except when that value is equal to zero. We don't want an LED to turn on after it's off, at least not until we want it to. So this check keeps an LED off once it has reached zero. Also, this routine gets called twice, so during each refresh cycle pass, the LED's on time is decreased by two. Okay, the display registers have been updated to reflect the new state of the display. Now the program calls the subroutine display refresh left, which is going to actually turn each LED on or off depending on the current value of display count L. 
So the program loads the current value of display count L into the working register. And display count L is keeping track of the current refresh cycle. Next, W is subtracted from display memory 1, and this triggers the carry flag in the status register. However, keep in mind that even though the carry flag is being set or cleared, since we are subtracting, the C flag is actually indicating if a borrow occurred. So if C is equal to 0, then a borrow did occur, and if C is equal to 1, then a borrow did not occur. Next, the C flag is tested to see if it's set. And if it's set, then a borrow did not occur, indicating that W is equal to or less than display memory 1. So the LED is turned on. Next, the C flag is again tested to see if it is clear. And if it is, then a borrow did happen, and W is greater than the value in display memory 1. So we turn the LED off. This process is repeated for each of the remaining LEDs in the left side of the display. Okay, now that the left side has been updated, it's time to repeat the process for the right side. Display refresh right is identical to display refresh left, except it's the mirror image of the left side. Now that the display is refreshed, it's time to update the counters to keep track of the current refresh cycle and the decay rate. So display count L is decremented by one with the new value being stored back in the register display count L. And if the decrement results in a zero, the next command is skipped. If it's not zero, then the go to LED display loop is executed and the refresh cycle is repeated. If it is zero, then display count H is decremented. And if display count H is zero, we return back to the main routine. If it's not zero, then we loop back to LED display loop S to repeat the whole process over. This loop system keeps the display fading at all times while only moving the brightest LED only a few times a second. Lastly, we return to the main routine and execute the next block of code, which loads the next LED in the sequence with the full on value of FF and then call LED display which repeats the process we've just covered. Okay, we've seen the code and have a general idea of how it works. Let's take a look at changing the values display LED on and display LED refresh and see what effects those changes have on the display. As you can see, I have the original values stashed away over there in the comments section so I can restore them when I need to. So let's change LED on to 80 hex and program the 16F57. Now that's interesting. The display is cycling faster and the fade is only extending out a few LEDs, leaving most of the display off all the time. Let's try changing the value to A0 and see what happens. Um, not much of a change, just a slight increase in the trailing LEDs in length. Okay, let's change LED on back to FF and change LED ref to 1. Hmm, now the display is just staying on and that's not all that interesting. What if we change LED ref to 20? That's more like it. Though the display is running a lot slower. Let's try changing LED ref to 5. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Let's step it up to 7. Not much of a change. Okay, let's try A. That's a lot closer to the original setting, but none of the LEDs ever make it to being completely off. Let's go back to 0F. That seems to be a good setting for what I want the display to look like. Well, I think that's about it for this episode. I welcome any questions you may have about this code or the display. Take care and thanks for watching. Also, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.